Hello and welcome to another episode with the Nairobi Hospital. I'm your host, Modoni Bovero. Today we will be discussing about congenital heart disease and the rheumatic heart disease. I'm joined by Dr. Osoro Mbui, who is a clinical administrator at the Nairobi Hospital. Karibu sana, Daktari. Thank you. To start us off, uh, what is congenital heart disease? So congenital heart disease mm -hmm. is a heart disease that uh, comes about when a child has been born. Uh, because of poor development inside the mother's womb. Mm -hmm. So you'll find these children have been born and for some reason they either can't breathe well or their heart is beating and there's a lot of noise as you listen and examine them um, and it affects their eating, um, their breathing um, and sometimes even how they grow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What of rheumatic heart disease? So rheumatic heart disease, unlike congenital heart disease, is an acquired disease. Um, you're not born with rheumatic heart disease, but you get it as you grow up. One of um, the biggest risk factor is continuous upper respiratory tract infection, or what we call the flu. Mm -hmm. So flus that are not treated over a period of time um, can lead to the heart getting affected uh, on the valves and causing rheumatic heart disease. Mm -hmm. Again, giving symptoms very similar to congenital heart disease. However, this happens later on in age, usually from around the age of nine years old. Mm -hmm. yeah. With a congenital heart disease being mm -hmm. something that you are born with, yeah. what are some of the effects that it can have on the child's heart? The way the heart is created is to pump blood mm -hmm. to the rest of the body. So any structural abnormality, because that's what congenital heart disease is, uh, means the heart cannot pump blood the way it ordinarily would. Therefore then, um, there are two kinds um, of congenital heart disease. There are those that we call cyanotic, where the baby turns blue. Those are the easiest because you see it when the child is born. And then there are those we call acyanotic, meaning that they do not cause the child to turn blue, and those are picked later on. However, if you have a clinician who is aware of it, like me, all our pediatricians can, they will be able to pick it at birth, even mm -hmm. if the child does not turn blue. Mm -hmm. yeah. What of rheumatic heart disease? So the signs and symptoms of rheumatic heart disease, again, will differ. Uh, because it depends on which part of the heart has been affected. As I had said earlier, it affects the valves. Mm -hmm. So if you remember your science, <laughs> you have the aortic valve mm -hmm. and you have the mitral valve. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, depending on which valve is affected, you could either have difficulty in breathing when the child exerts, maybe trying to run or walk fast or play. Um, you could have uh, easy fatigability, getting tired very easily. Mm -hmm. um, you could have uh, in due course swelling of the limbs um, or the child swelling. Um, and you could also have um, failure to grow because as this blood is not pumped around the body well, it means the child cannot eat or doesn't eat well and therefore doesn't develop well. So these are children who you will find um, a child who, for example, is the age of nine, looks like a four-year-old. And you wonder, what is it, what we call failure to thrive? Okay. Yeah. What are some of the treatments available for, let's start with the congenital heart disease? So for congenital heart disease, because it's a structural abnormality, mm -hmm. it means you must go and correct the structural defect. Mm -hmm. And for that, it's usually open heart surgery. Um, which is available in our country in various centers mm. um, and you've heard of people saying there's a hole in the heart so you go and fix that hole mm. uh, or the way the vessels are sitting is not right you go and reposition them um, that's what's available for congenital heart disease mm -hmm. yeah and is it an expensive treatment are there f available funds to assist those who are even not able to maybe fund themselves mm. so Yes, um, open heart surgery is an expensive uh, affair mm -hmm. and yes there are funds that are available. One of the good things that our government did in uh, 2016 was the universal health coverage and opening up the NHIF mm -hmm. um, in celebrating NHIF at 50. So that opened up funding for um, specialized surgeries and open heart surgery was one of their 
pilot projects, mm -hmm. which I think we gained a lot of milestones from. Mm -hmm. So there is funding through the National Health Insurance Fund, um, and then we have um, a number of goodwill, good wishers who also fund the same. So like at the Nairobi Hospital, we have uh, the Charity Heart Fund, where we get a lot of corporates and partners mm -hmm. who work with us. They donate money, uh, which goes into the program, mm -hmm. so that for children who have this condition, um, either congenital heart disease or rheumatic heart disease that has affected the valves, mm -hmm. uh, they are able to fund for these procedures to be done. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, for congenital heart disease, insurance companies don't cover. However, they also do partner with us by um, contributing towards the charity heart fund, but you will not find it as your regular coverage mm -hmm. because they generally do not cover for congenital conditions, mm -hmm. whether it be heart disease, whether it be cleft lip or cleft palate. Mm -hmm. yes. So what is the criteria used uh, so that uh, the people who are in need of uh, the services get the services or the funding? So it's first for Kenyans only. Okay. We start there. Um, it's important to state that because we've had a few um, foreigners come to ask if we can share it, but it's for Kenyans. Uh, children aged between 0 and 17 years of age uh, who come from needy homes. Um, and needy homes varies as you know. Um, I could be needy and I don't appear to be needy. Mm -hmm. So those are the people who are eligible for the fund and they must also be eligible for the surgery. So once they apply, anyone who applies who has a child within that age mm -hmm. are invited to come. They are reviewed by our pediatric cardiologist mm -hmm. who's then able to, once she has assessed and feels this child would benefit from surgery, mm -hmm. then we'll send to the cardiothoracic team mm -hmm. that will evaluate for suitability. Mm -hmm. um, and then that team, once the team has agreed that clinically the child can benefit, then we have a social worker who evaluates. Since this is hard-earned money from the corporates, uh, we have a responsibility to be accountable for it. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we also have to do due diligence. Um, so once they've had a social worker evaluation, then we are able to schedule the procedure. Yeah. So this year we have an annual event towards the Charity Heart Fund. Mm -hmm. You could mention something about it. So every year we hold a charity um, golf tournament mm -hmm. where we invite our partners uh, who help to sponsor for the program so that we can continue to raise money for this noble cause. This year we hope to do it on 26th July. Uh, you're welcome. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely come. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, we also try and get some of the beneficiaries okay. of the fund to come so that those who have um, sponsored the, the program can also be able to see the beneficiaries of the fund. Mm -hmm. Now on the rheumatic heart disease, yeah. what are the treatments available for the disease? So because rheumatic heart disease mainly affects the valves when it comes to the heart, it affects other parts of the body. But because we are focusing on the heart today, I'll just dwell on that. Mm -hmm. um, so once it affects the valves, it means they do not open and close as they ought to, mm -hmm. which means it affects um, flow of blood through the body. So the treatment for that is to actually replace the valves. So once the children have been found clinically suitable for the procedure, then our team goes in, removes the, the diseased valve, and replaces with another valve. Mm -hmm. An important thing about rheumatic heart disease uh, is that once those children have had the surgery, they have to be followed up for life. Because the valve, in as much as is a good valve and is helping them live a normal life, uh, we have to give them anti-clotting medication so that they do not form clots and later on get side effects. Yeah. Therefore, part of the social worker evaluation and counseling for these patients is to tell them that once we've done this surgery, you cannot go away scot-free. You must continue follow up with your doctor. Mm -hmm. Initially, it may be after two weeks, a month. Uh, as you're getting stable, of course, it gets staggered mm -hmm. to a point where it's possibly just once a year. Mm -hmm. But it is a lifelong follow up. 
because you have to be on anti-clotting medication. Mm -hmm. If not, we can actually lose you. Mm. Yeah. Do people who suffer from these special conditions, do, are they, do they have to follow a specific uh, life or rather dietary for them to keep healthy? So, yes and no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the yes is um, you have to eat healthy. You're the kind of person we do not want to get obese because you will overwork that heart. We've already intervened in that heart. Mm -hmm. No, in terms of we will not tell you to have a special diet so you can eat normal food, yes. but eat a balanced diet in moderate amounts mm -hmm. um, so that you can maintain health but not get obese. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Back to the congenital heart disease. Yes. Most of it is noted or realized during pregnancy. Is there something that can be done to avoid that situation? So it's interesting, There's, it can be noted during pregnancy at 28 weeks. Uh, during pregnancy, the 28 weeks scan usually checks for any anomalies in the child. Mm -hmm. um, and it may be picked, but sometimes it may not be picked depending on which kind of anomaly it is. Mm -hmm. Because like for holes in the heart, while the child is in the, in the, in the womb, you may not pick because the circulation is going on well. Mm -hmm. And even when they come out, there are some holes in the heart that we may not fix, but we will give time and they actually close spontaneously. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some that we can actually pick in the, in the uterus based on ultrasound. Mm -hmm. It's important to note um, that ultrasounds are very user dependent. So you may do an ultrasound and you find a lesion and I do and I don't find a lesion. However, we keep training our team so that they can be able to pick some of these lesions mm -hmm. um, to be able to assist the family and to help us plan on how to manage the child. Yeah. What is the prevalence rate of infections or rather of these diseases, both uh, congenital and rheumatic, in terms of regions and the ages that are mostly affected? So for rheumatic heart disease, because I told you it usually comes after a child has had upper respiratory tract infection that's not been treated for a while or well treated, um, the commonest age that has been found according to research is the age of nine when you develop it. However, uh, there are people who live to adulthood with this congenital anomalies. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were not picked or if they were picked, they didn't know where to go. Um, and therefore, even a lot of the valve replacements that we do in adults are mm -hmm. due to um, rheumatic heart disease that they picked when they were younger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in terms of congenital heart diseases, there was a uh, research that was done at the University of Nairobi mm -hmm. a few years ago that was able to pick that 25% of the heart diseases we have in Kenya mm -hmm. are actually congenital heart diseases. In terms of region, we were not able to delineate which is the more prevalent area. Mm. Um, so right now we just pick them as they are. So for example, in Nairobi Hospital we may do a lot of, we may have procedures on a lot of children from central and eastern, but I will say it's largely because those are the closest counties yeah, counties. that are uh, to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Because if you go to Eldoret, they also have a cohort that is coming from the Rift Valley area. Mm -hmm. If you go to Kijabe, there's also a cohort. Mm -hmm. So we don't have data to say this is the area that has the higher prevalence or not, uh, so that we can advise people, be careful. But then again, we know there's the challenge of migration back and forth. Yeah. So really what we encourage is um, consistent or focused antenatal uh, follow-up mm -hmm. um, so that the mother within the first 12 weeks of pregnancy, because that's when the organs form, yeah. you'll find the obstetrician or the midwife will advise on taking things like folate, mm -hmm. iron, um, eating healthy so that the child can develop well. Mm -hmm. um, then an ultrasound being done at 28 weeks to be able to guide us, what are we to do? Mm -hmm. In Kenya, abortion is illegal. So for us, it guides us and prepares us uh, for conditions where maybe if you're born, we can actually go straight to theater yeah. and try and rectify the anomaly. Mm -hmm. And we have done that in one or two cases where we were lucky to pick it 
within the uh, pregnancy period so that child is born, we already had a consent once baby is out, we can go straight to theater, let's fix this anomaly so mm -hmm. that the child recovers and they go home well with mommy and she doesn't have to wait and struggle. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And that's it from this episode with the Nairobi Hospital. Today we have learned so much about the congenital and the rheumatic heart conditions. For more information, you can visit the Nairobi Hospital's website. That is www.thenairobihospital.org. Thank you very much, Dr. Tari, for joining us today and for sharing with us that insightful information. You're welcome. Thank you, too. Thank you very much. That's it. Ciao.